introduce ourselves again real quick. So I'll start us off. My name is JP. Um, I am the Election Protection Manager at Democracy NC. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And I've been with DemNC for um, about two and a half years now, since 2021. Um, and yeah, like I said before, um, we're testing out a lot of new things this year, um, all in preparation for the giant election for next year. Um, and testing it out in places that do have the important municipals, like here in Rocky Mount. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'll pass it over to Lucas. Yeah, thank you. My name is Lucas Sejo, and I am the Eastern Regional Engaging Organizer out here at Democracy NC. So um, I'm I'm based in Pitt County, but I cover Pitt, Edgecombe, Nash, Craven, and surrounding areas too. Um, so out here tonight, tomorrow, I'll actually be in Carteret County. Um, just different different place each night, so um, all over the place. But yeah, I'm really happy to be out here. I've been here for about six months now. Um, so pretty fresh, but still going. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I'm always here if you need anything, and it's great to, to be with y'all tonight. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Charlie Lewis. I'm retired, and I knew nothing of this program until I got an email yesterday, I think, or the day before. Excellent. Uh, asking me to attend the uh, election protection program. I had no idea it existed. Excellent. I love to hear that. So uh, I say yes, because uh, I signed up to share a light tool uh, on the election board on election day. Okay. And, uh, so I'm thinking, well, the more I know. Absolutely. You know, that's what we're here for. Think, so that's why I'm here. Excellent. Yeah. I am uh, Hilda Whitford Bailey. I uh, reside in Nash County. Uh, as I've already mentioned, I've been here about, yeah, about 18 years. I'm going to be 18 years. Um, worked here, retired here. Just trying to keep my pulse on what the city is doing on the main things of our leadership. Um, since I've retired, I've become more active in the political, I guess you say, political uh, arena a little bit, and just real active in one of the campaigns here that's going on. Okay, excellent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Carmilla Stanson, we've lived here all my life. I live in Pine Tops. Okay. Uh, well, actually, three miles out of Pine Tops, seven miles out of Tallboro, but I moved at that location after the 99 flood. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, I've been working in Rocky Mountain at Huntingwell for 36 years. Okay. I've been active with Black Workers for Justice, the NAACP, Democratic Party. I serve on the state Democratic Party Executive Committee, mm -hmm. uh, Edgecombe County. So I'm all over the place. Um, I try to video, like the day people ain't here, they can go back and look at it. I do this out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Do this out of pocket. Yeah. Came to a funeral, left with the tall bird, and um, forgot about the Human Relations Commission. I mean, they moved it from last week to this week. I got there half an hour late, but I got there. Yeah. <laughs> so then, because I was coming back to Tallbury, I mean, I come out for this meeting. So that worked out just right. But I just try to make sure people get the right information. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I give my spiel, mm -hmm. but I also let them see what's going on and they can form their own opinion. Like Where certain folk, they don't come to nothing, mm -hmm. but they look at it and they put out misleading information. Sure. And that's something I've been doing since 1996, mm -hmm. recording meetings. And like I told them at the HRC meeting, uh, a few minutes ago, that I hate that I didn't have a YouTube because the stuff that I was using back then, those sites are going away. So a lot of stuff I had on the internet back then mm -hmm. is gone. Oh, that's a shame. So I hate that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, going forward, I don't think YouTube's going. Oh, I don't think so either. <laughs> so, well, thank you for all that work you do. Um, and thank, thank you, everybody. And, and the other thing, um, got ties to Craven County because my wife was, went to Craven, went to West Craven School too. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, please. <laughs> so, amazing. Um, yeah, so that's one of those things, um, you know, looking at next year, we are uh, testing um, between doing just in-person versus just virtual trainings. Last year, all of our trainings were online, um, as well as in 2020, because of the pandemic. Um, but this year, there is uh, there have been conversations about, okay, how do we get back into the world and do both? the in-person and the virtual. Um, so we have uh, ordered some um, conferencing tools 
uh, but I'm very grateful that you're here recording because we don't have those tools yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. Uh, and yeah, like I said before, um, <coughs> this is sort of, this is the first election protection training that we're, we're, we've done this year. Um, so apologies if there are uh, awkward pauses as I try to figure things out over here. Mm -hmm. um, and apologies for anything that might be missing um, but like Lucas said before, I will be sending out a follow-up email to you three um, with all of the materials that you need. Um, so without further ado, I'll get into it here. Um, <clears throat> Democracy NC, uh, first of all, is a nonpartisan organization. Um, yes. Uh, that uses organizing, research, and advocacy to protect and expand the right to vote in our state. Uh, and we have been running some version of the Vote Protector Program since 2014, since you moved back from New Jersey. Um, I, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, this is for Zoom, so see, this is from last year. So I'm JP, uh, I was born and raised in Charlotte, um, but I've been living in Triangle for seven years. Uh, more recently, I've been shifting into programmatic work, uh, whereas before I was doing more of the research work for Democracy North Carolina. Um, and yeah, uh, so earlier, Geraldine, you said you have not done this program before. Has anybody else done the program before? No, I did not know it existed. Wow. So okay. here. Okay, great. I saw it on social media. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's great. Love to, love to see that. Yeah. Um, and yes, it, like I said before, too, um, this was sort of thrown together very quickly within the last week. Um, and so part of me was thinking, I don't know if anybody's going to show up. So the fact that we got three is excellent. Um, and I'm really grateful that, that y'all are here. Um, so Lucas, why do we do the VP program? Yeah, so this is actually the first time that Democracy NC is coordinating a municipal election protection program. I think we mentioned that earlier. So mm -hmm. again, brand new territory for all of us. Um, and we're doing this because not only are municipal elections important and really undervalued, um, but this is also the first election in North Carolina that will require us to show photo IDs in order to cast our ballot. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've already seen threats to election workers and voters um, in the past, as long as uh, an increased amount of sp uh, spreading of misinformation and allegations of fraud. So, you know, we're, we're out here, we're going to be doing poll monitoring and operating the voter hotline so we can quickly identify and correct these problems. Um, in order for every eligible voter who wishes to cast a ballot so that they can do so. Um, and it will also help us identify areas for policy changes and improvements in the voting process moving forward. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we have three fresh faces out here, so we're all, all getting this together. Um, and, uh, and we really appreciate you, you know, wanting to be, wanting to be a part of this. Um, so just again, thank you for, for being out here today. Um, and, and you know, here's our agenda for what we'll be going through this evening. Um, so as you can see, we'll go through our goals and requirements, then what to expect while doing this work, um, materials, uh, how to be a vote protector, including um, you know, like have the voting site checklist, so what you need to do upon approval and, and during your shift. Um, and then we're gonna go into you know our next steps. Um, and you know, in this where we'll do some work about what it'll look like next, and we'll, you know, of course, do some stuff in the email later on as well to help out with that. So, again, like as you're looking at this agenda, I do want to reiterate, you know, don't frantically write down notes. You don't have to get every little thing because we will be sending this out. So there's, you know, okay. just soak it in. You know, have you know, <laughs> have conversations, and, and it'll be there later on as well. Okay. But you will be great at it. <laughs> there's a there's a ten page exam no, no. with three essay questions. <laughs> All right, so um, so there's going to be a slight correction up here, but uh, basically what we're asking of poll monitors, um, yes, anybody participating in election protection, um, you are here being trained as a vote protector. That is the term we use. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, you're a nonpartisan poll monitor. Uh, assisting voters outside of the voting enclosure. Um, traditionally, we do specific action days, um, and based on research that we've done on past elections, 
the first day of early voting, the last day of early voting, and election day, those are the three days that generally have the highest voter turnout. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of making an impact and helping as many voters as possible, we do choose uh, those days, generally speaking. Um, this year, uh, municipal uh, research has looked a little different, and I was looking at Rocky Mount. Um, we're actually going to be doing uh, the last two days of early voting, mm -hmm. so October 6th and October 7th, and that's the edit up there. So instead of the first day of early voting tomorrow, um, we will be doing October 6th. Um, shifts will be about uh, between three and four hours long. Um, you'll be doing either an 8 to 11.30 a.m. shift or an 11.30 to 3 p.m. shift. Um, and the other thing we tell our vote protectors, too, is that's all we ask of you. If you want to do more, of course, do as much as you would like. Uh, because really the skills and the, the knowledge that we're sharing with you today is to help voters. So wherever you think that you can help voters, um, please, by all means, uh, take the initiative and, and show up where you would like to, wherever you would like to help voters. Um, so, let's see. Before you go to the next slide, yeah. I would like to interject that tomorrow, um, the first day of early vote in Rocky Mount, yeah. they will not be here. This is the early vote site. They're only going to be at the Agriculture Center yeah, sure. for at the Board of Elections site. For the it won't day. start here until Monday. Monday. Interesting. Yeah. And, it's gonna, and, and it's very confusing to people already. Mm -hmm. That is very confusing. I didn't, I mean, just looking at the State Board of Elections website, which mm -hmm. is where I pull all of the information, that was not clear to me. I thought it would just be at all of the sites starting tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. no. was, so is there, there's not an early voting place in Edgecombe County, it's just the one in Nash? Uh, n um, I don't. I don't think so. I don't Nash think. Nash only will have Nashville. Nash County is the national. Right. Mm -hmm. so wait. Oh, wait. It should be at the. Um, I have to look it up. But it normally be at the. Uh, 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 social the services. Okay. Right. Social services uh, building on Faber Road. That's where it normally be at. But I gotta look it up. I don't okay. think it starts tomorrow. Oh yeah. Uh -uh. It's, it's a lot of confusion. Usually is. That's crazy. Yeah, that's um, that is information that I love to have because uh, you know tomorrow I'll be calling the state board of elections and letting them know that uh, because it should be uniform. Um, it should be. It should be uniform, um, and those things are not. Yeah, uh, and those things are not uh, written in the law. Those are generally guidance for. Um, standards that the state board might be setting for county boards of elections. Mm -hmm. um, and regardless, one of the other programs that we do uh, that Lucas has helped with um, training, I think, recently, mm -hmm. um, is county boards of elections monitoring. So next year, um, leading up to the election in, in Rocky Mountain next year, uh, we would be sending um, folks like you to the county board of elections uh, meetings as early as June, July, around the time that they start uh, deciding when and where early voting locations will be. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you would submit a report to us saying, hey, we were just in this meeting and they don't want to start early voting mm -hmm. at Braswell Community Center until Monday of early voting. And that's where we'd step in and do that advocacy on the front end. Um, but this is great information to know. It's <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Already, I'm already learning more from y'all mm -hmm. right now than y'all have learned from me. I love it. Okay. Um, all right. So, so uh, vote protectors, um, there are a few requirements. Uh, it pretty much boils down to being able to uh, get to the voting sites. Um, y'all were able to get here today, so I think you'll be able to get to your respective voting sites. Um, you have to be at least 16 years old, uh, unless you have a guardian um, to sign a waiver. Uh, you'll have to um, fill out report forms and digitally sign a volunteer waiver. Uh, and then finally, um, we'll be asking that you report any problems to the hotline that Democracy NC has managed for several years, um, 888 Our Vote.
Mm -hmm. I just want to pause here real quick because um, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. wherever you are at a polling place, if you have any questions for yourself, for a voter, or even somebody working at the polling place, mm -hmm. call this number, 888-OUR-VOTE, and you will be connected with uh, lawyers who know all about North Carolina-specific election law and have contacts at the State Board of Elections, the Governor's Office, uh, County Boards of Elections, and will be able to respond to any incident or question that you might bring to them. So it could be a, something as simple as, where is my voting location? Or it could be something as complex as, somebody has shown up, uh, or a caravan of people have shown up with flags that are making me feel unsafe, what should I do? And lawyers at our Democracy NC office, it's not really an office, most of them are working from home, um, they will answer your call as soon as possible and help with that. So what we always tell our vote protectors at the end of the day, if you have any doubt or any questions, call this number. Um, and you know the, the, the hotline has gotten more and more successful every year because we are training more poll monitors like y'all on the ground um, to actually make those calls. So many voters are not aware of this hotline, this resource, mm -hmm. um, and so you know there might only be three of y'all in this training, but if y'all each tell 10 people about this hotline uh, the day of an election, that's gonna make significant impacts, especially when you look at, you know, Charlotte just had a municipal primary election, Democratic primary, and there were about 80 provisional ballots cast, mm -hmm. and out of those, about 20 of them are being rejected. You know, those are 20 voters who, if they encountered a, a poll monitor and knew how to avoid casting a provisional ballot, could have had their ballot counted, right? Um, so. I do have the flyer. Okay. Oh, okay. Just to confirm, um, Edgecombe County Administrative Building will start tomorrow uh, at 8 o'clock to 6. So you can you can go to Tarboro or Asheville. You have to go to Tarboro. To vote. Which is still very the strange. Edgecombe County residents in Rocky Mount will not be able to do early voting until the 25th, Monday. Well, I also Here hope that, we, that the voters know whether they're in Edgecombe or Nash County mm -hmm. for this as well. Yeah. Uh, because that will be another issue. So hopefully that's... Yeah, this is very problematic. Yeah, and then... For Nash County, early voting does start tomorrow also, but it's at the agriculture center. Yeah. And you can't come here until the 25th. And even though it's the same municipality, if you're voting on the same mayor across these two counties, the Edgecombe population would either have to go to Tarboro to mm -hmm. vote for the Rocky Mountain mayor. Or Nashville, <laughs> which is 10 miles out or more. Because you well, can't vote outside of your right. county, which is another mm -hmm. issue that comes up often. Right. Um, so, you know, I love that Rocky Mount uh, for all of those reasons. Historically, you know, I think it's pretty unique that it has this split between the two counties, but administratively, this is a nightmare. Yeah. A lot of people are realizing that right now. Well, I don't even think they haven't realized it. They it's going to be, yeah, tomorrow's going to be kind of crazy. Okay. And then, a lot of people are thinking that they're going to be able to early vote mm -hmm. here yeah. tomorrow. So, so we, we might have see. somebody here to direct them to Nashville. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> wow. Okay. What a headache. Yeah, and then also we got to have somebody over at the social service building right now to direct them to Tarbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tomorrow. This is a nightmare. At yeah, the social service building? Mm hmm. They can vote over there. Is it there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 25th or 21st? I thought it was 21st. I think both of each one's facts are supposed to be tomorrow. I only have the administration. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. It's the 25th, the social service. Unless they change the story. Social services? Okay. 25th. Okay. Tarboro Administration Building 21st. Okay, let me. Okay, yeah, make sure that's. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna call. See, that's what I'm saying. Even if they changed it now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So okay. let's see what the um, state board says. Um, the state board, and uh -huh. this was the information I was going off of. Uh -huh. um, so the state board says the Edgecombe County Board of Elections, which is located in Tarboro, mm -hmm. yeah. they will be starting tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Thursday, September Tomorrow. 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 In Tarboro. Yes. But you are correct that <laughs> Rocky Mount Social Services doesn't start until the 25th. So this is... Four days later. Yeah, I, and, and it's, that's exactly... If you're looking at the flyer from the Edgecombe have, Board of Elections... I have the yeah. official printed flyer. Oh yeah, I have it pulled up right now. That we've been posting on our pages. Same exact thing. Yeah. It's very strange that they wouldn't... And the same thing for Nash County. Um, this is the location, but it's not open until the 25th. Yeah, we have to go to Nash tomorrow. Mm. Also vote for Rocky Mountain Mayor. That's what makes no sense to me. Um, uh, okay. So we've been we've been blasting it and blasting it, doing little yeah, Facebook lives and trying to remind people, you know, what the where to go, where to go. <laughs> and this might explain why in the data, looking at past municipal elections in Edgecombe and Nash, there were more people voting towards the end of the early voting period. Mm -hmm. Because they just come on. To because tomorrow, at the very beginning, half of the county, it's or half of the city, kind of, right. can't really vote. Which is weird, because they're just not capable of voting yeah. the other one. I'm real curious to see how many show up at this door tomorrow. Yeah, well, in Charlotte last year, um, Mecklenburg County didn't release the early voting sites until a week before early voting oh, started, yeah. which was two months late. No, no penalties, no repercussions for them. And uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Charlotte, but Beatty's Ford Library is a huge library yeah. in um, oh. yeah, Northwest <laughs> Charlotte, um, black neighborhood. And they changed, it's always been a voting site. Uh -huh. And in that uh, announcement a week before early voting started, it wasn't a voting site. And we had hundreds of voters showing up to Beatty's Ford because they've gone there every year. Yes. And they weren't able. Well, we got to move them somewhere else, but still, the, the inconvenience, especially if somebody only has a couple of hours or a lunch break to, to and cast them out. off work mm -hmm. to do that, and then later they couldn't, they weren't allowed to take off work. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so coming back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming back to this, and this is, this is such great information, and this is the kind of, this is the reason we do the vote collector program, is you know, eventually we'll be showing you about the uh, watching and documenting. If you all talk to voters and we get re report after report that, hey, I showed up to my voting location and it wasn't a voting location, or uh, it's not open today, even though Nash County is open, um, all of that goes into our reporting that we then use for advocacy and lobbying. And, you know, long term, what I want for North Carolina are things like automatic voter registration, you know, I want things um, like universal uh, election periods. I don't want all these different times across different counties, across different states. Um, and I want election day to be a holiday so that nobody has to take time off or, or lose income to, to participate in, in their rights. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> this is a great conversation so far. Um, so uh, as a vote protector, um, you have four main roles. Uh, Watch and document. That's the main, the main uh, role that you'll be playing. Um, a lot of folks might be shy. They might not necessarily want to engage with poll monitors, but you're there to make sure that uh, nothing bad is happening necessarily. Um, and then, uh, yeah, for example, um, since we're, we're in Eastern North Carolina, an Eastern North Carolina example, a polling place in Birdie County ran out of ballots in 2020. Um, and a vote protector alerted us uh, at Democracy NC, and we were able to get an extension of voting hours. So that's the kind of work that vote protectors could be engaging in. Um, if y'all find out, you know, at the Tarboro location, people go and they get there a little late or they're in lines, that's the sort of thing where if you call the hotline and let us know, we're then able to advocate for extending vote, uh, those hours so that people can get their ballot cast. So they can get through and vote. Mm -hmm. okay. um, 
Secondly, uh, you're there to help and connect with uh, voters. So um, you have some resources there, and I'd encourage you to take as many as you'd like before you leave today. Um, giving these voters their resources and ensuring that they're successfully able to cast their ballot, uh, in addition to answering general questions um, that may not even require calling the hotline. So hopefully after this training today, you are equipped to say, oh, you don't know how to look up your voting place? Here's the website, and it's a quick, easy process. Um, then third, and this is very important, uh, is to remain nonpartisan. Um, so you must fully commit to being 100% nonpartisan when you are protecting the vote, when you are being a poll monitor with us. Um, on the day of your shift, uh, it'll be, well, I just skipped that part. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I know you said that you were volunteering with a candidate or doing some work with a candidate, and that's... I'm a campaign manager. Oh, you're a campaign manager? Well, <laughs> so that is totally... So, I'm going to have the shift roles. <laughs> and that is, that is totally fine. Uh, as long I mean, as I'm reporting all this back to the mm -hmm. team, of course, mm -hmm. and um, making sure that... I may concern, too, is that there is some protection. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and what do we do when we run into an issue? at the polls, and they're like, we've got the number, yeah. you know, and whatever, whatever else information they give us. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be equipped to handle it. Good, excellent. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it uh, basically just means, you know, when, if you are, you know, doing the morning shift for the campaign, yeah. just make sure you take off the button, take off the hat, and yeah. then in the mm -hmm. afternoon you can do Put the vote okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and then finally, uh, and this is very important as well, uh, keep yourself safe. So, um, you know, we might get into some examples later that are uh, very unique that involve guns or involve police. Um, the most important thing is that you all remain safe, and I don't want to be alarmist. I don't expect negative things to happen necessarily, um, but uh, whatever, whatever goes down, you know, your priority should be your own safety. So don't jump in front of somebody if they're being crazy. Mm -hmm. um, just make yourself safe and then call the hotline. And I'm going to say that a lot. Just don't be like the football game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I think next we have a flow chart. Great. So this is sort of just illustrating um, the process that, that we're creating, uh, the sort of infrastructure we're creating. Um, you all are both voters and vote protectors. I hope that you're all going to cast the ballot, in addition to helping other people cast the ballot. Um, once, you are, once you submit your report forms and your voting site checklist, those are going straight to us at Democracy North Carolina and our partners. Um, and then we use that to, uh, you know, at the end of this presentation, I'll share with you our, our election protection reports. Um, we do a bunch of analysis of the numbers and the hotline calls that we get. And then we use that for uh, advocacy. So in the past, you know, in, in, uh, since we've been running this in 2014, we've used this to extend early voting hours. We've used this to protect things like same-day registration. Mm -hmm. um, we've used this to, uh, in 2020, um, so many people used uh, mail-in ballots, absentee vote-by-mail mm -hmm. ballots. Yeah. Um, at that time, uh, there was still only the three-day grace period for ballots to arrive after Election Day. Well, if you remember, there were, at the same time, um, there was a huge strain on the Postal Service, and a lot of uh, ballots were arriving late by no fault of the voter. Um, and so something we were able to do was document, okay, we're tracking these absentee ballots. They mailed them a month in advance sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and they're still not there. Mm -hmm. You need to extend you need to allow those uh, that grace period to be to be longer. Okay. Um, so, uh, as I said before, um, when you call the voter hotline, um, it'll be staffed by lawyers and or uh, second year law students mm -hmm. um, who will answer your questions and get a summary of the, the issue. Um, our hotline is also available in other languages. So if you do encounter somebody who speaks Spanish or speaks uh, Chinese and is difficult to communicate with, um, we have a hotline resource with uh, those, those languages for them. Awesome. Yeah. Um, 
And the hotline does not just document problems. Um, you know, we work with election experts rapidly to resolve serious issues. I said all of this already. Um, so yeah, I think I'll pass it over to Lucas. Yeah, okay. of course. So let's get into what to expect. Um, and like JP just said, you know, there can be some very interesting situations going on, but you know, that's not gonna be everything. Um, so as a reminder to you know to you all, you know it, it is very likely that you may see very little action, but that's a good thing. Um, and we still want to hear like the voting sites are seeing little issues from voters. Um, many of the voting sites are quiet, while others that are facing complications may result in more questions you receive from voters. So like we are just talking about, you know, we may see a lot of questions the next couple of days with uh, voting sites because. You what's open and what's not open. Um, but once you get to your voting site, what you'll see are these five groups right here. So you'll see poll monitors, partisan poll observers, campaigners, such electioners, um, election officials, and voters. Um, so, you know, if, if you've, you know, been here before, um, or, you know, if you've, if you've ever done any kind of like um, work before with the polls, um, you know, you may have, at one point, um, you know, gone inside the voting site and introduced yourself to election judges, you know, or any of that. You might, you know, be, I think you're all are pressured, that may not be the case in this room. Um, but just a clarifying point is, you know, this will be something that's not happening anymore this year. Um, we, as the State Board of Elections has made it clear in recent years that poll monitors may not enter the buffer zone. So what is the buffer zone? Um, the buffer zone is an area about 50 feet around the entrance of a polling place. Um, the air, area will usually be indicated by a chalk line, a series of signs, and or the presence of poll workers. Um, in your role, you'll watch and monitor the election outside the polling place, helping to promote a positive and safe voting experience. Um, so you'll be talking with and listening to voters and you know making sure at the same time that you're staying outside that mark buffer zone. And so that's the same zone for people who are yep. campaigning. Um, Correct. Well. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm sure you're familiar. They usually draw a chalk line if there's pavement. Otherwise, they. Feet, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so y'all will be out there with them, and mm -hmm. bless you. Um, Thank you. And so you know, I've actually like you know, this is this is true for a lot of groups. So I did some canvassing work um, at some monitors before, at, or at some election sites before, doing some you know information campaigning and whatnot. And, you know, still having to stay outside that buffer zone. So, you know, that's just one big thing right off the bat is don't cross through there, mm -hmm. don't go inside while you're in this space. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just right off the bat. Um, but there is an exception. There's one exception, if I just told you don't go in there, is if you need to use the bathroom, because, you know, we are humane. <laughs> so, but, you know, when you, when, you have to, when you have to go and do that, you know, make sure you attempt to contact an election official um, just to make sure that they'll grant you permission into the polling place. And while you're in there, just make sure you avoid speaking to voters um, after crossing the buffer zone. Right. Um, and if the election official doesn't allow you to enter the voting enclosure, you may leave your shift to find a nearby area. So, you know, it's, we're not going to say, what are you doing? You better go back and hold it. Um, you know, you're still a person. Um, and like I was just saying, you know, you may see other poll monitoring groups at your at your voting site. We do this with a lot of other partners and coalition partners across the state. So you would, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if you saw people like you can go blueprint or, or uh, organizations such like that out mm -hmm. there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we also want to have a quick note on partisan poll observers. So that second part right there. Um, so poll observers are appointed by the party and may not impede or disrupt the voting process, um, interfere with voter privacy, take photos slash video of the voting site, or provide voter assistance. And if you hear from a voter that a poll observer has done any of these prohibited activities, please call the hotline. Um, so this is, you know, it'll be, there are no changes to this this year. I know that there's been some bills in the Journal Assembly that have been talking about this. So this is standard within the past, but just know that if you, Go if you decide to come back and do this moving forward, this will be something that appears a little bit differently just because of recent legislations. But this year, it's it's going to be the same. So you know, just keep keep an ear out for what people are saying. 
but you know, it may be more of an issue uh, moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. And just another pro tip is before calling the hotline about an incident, make sure you know who um, from above is involved, as well as identifying characteristics. So for example, a voter in a red shirt, an election official with blonde hair and glasses, so on and so forth, um, just so we have that kind of identifying markers. Should we do a quick uh, pop quiz? Sure. Let's yeah, why don't you do that first one? Okay. All right, so let's do this quick pop quiz. So, um, which of these actions would be considered a partisan action and hence not something you should do? A, helping a Republican voter find the right polling place. B, casually chatting to a Democrat poll reader about your hopes for a particular candidate. Or C, calling the voter hotline if someone in a Biden hat is blocking voters from entering the polling place. Oh, <laughs> So the, the question was, which of these actions would be considered a partisan action, and hence not something you should do? Oh, that's C. C, too. A and B. I'm saying B and C. <laughs> There's just one right answer, right? you got to lock in one final answer. Oh, okay. Okay, say one again. So, I'll read them, I'll read them one more time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's tricky. No, I know, I know. We got a very, you know, uh, I know y'all just don't like the <laughs> quizzes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we got a really chatty group in here, so I know y'all are going <laughs> I'll say it one more time. Um, no. Helping a Republican voter find the right polling place, that's A. B, casually chatting to a Democratic poll reader about your hopes for a particular candidate. Or C, calling the voter hotline if someone in a Biden hat is blocking voters from entering the polling place. Okay, B. I said B. And these things you should not do. We were asking for which one should you call them. Are, is something that you should not do. Yeah. You shouldn't do any of it. I'm sorry, you said it. What? C. C. Well, the correct answer is B. So yes. you, you can help a Republican voter find yes. the right polling right. place. And typically, I don't really think you would know if they're Republican oh, voter or not. Oh, yeah. So that shouldn't be, I mean, unless they come in some gear. Yeah. So that, you know, so that, that, shouldn't be, that shouldn't be an issue for y'all. Exactly. That's how um, that The main thing is you got to help both. You got to, exactly. That's the main thing. That's the main point. Yeah. Yeah. You got to help No matter what. Because you might know that they're Republican. You might. Yeah, so, you know so, them, right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then C, calling the voter hotline if someone in a Biden, Biden hat is blocking the voters from the, the polling place. That's the least. If someone's, like, you know, that would be someone kind of, like, reporting that to you that, like, this is happening or something that you see. You know, that would be one of the actions that you would need to, to call upon. That way there can be something, you know, some intervention happening That's for that can be, you know, well, mitigated. Um, yeah. Yeah, it could be a Biden hat. It could be any kind of hat. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's just like if one person, you know, is kind of intimidating people in that manner, that's what we yeah. call upon. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you know, don't casually chat to a Democratic poll reader or a Republican poll reader, or a no label no, party poll reader. Yeah, about who yeah. you want to win. You know, while you have this shirt on. If, you know, if you want to go and you know put a different shirt on and come back. Do as you please, but as long as you're, you know, wearing your wearing your vote protector shirt and doing that, abstain for the Stay moment. Good. Yeah, correct. Stay right. I'm glad we did the quiz. Yes, yes, awesome. very good. That's very good. good. Uh, all right. So <coughs> um, next. So oh yeah, we talked about the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. I may have missed some slides there. The materials. Uh, oh, where's the buffer zone? <laughs> Always remember the buffer. Well, I, I did want to ask the question. Yeah. Actually, put a uh, line out, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They will put it. They will make it. Yeah. Oh, uh, some yeah. cones, some cones, or something. It'll be some kind yeah, of marking or, or something out there. Okay. But I, I had a question. Now, if you did this, call the hotline. W but would it be best to, 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 to contact your local um, uh, board of elections first, or just call y'all straight out? If you have. It seems like you have a relationship with the Board of Elections. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you but, do, then by all means, uh, make the uh, contact yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the thing we would like is just some report. Of right, that. right, 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 right. So as long as you mm -hmm. submit one of the report, report forms saying, here's what happened, and mm -hmm. I called the, the County Board of Elections, mm -hmm. that's fine by us, too. Right. And then um, if I don't hear from them, then I will you know, make sure I call y'all. Exactly. I mean, because you could get it done faster, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then I guess... 
another part of uh, reporting it to the hotline, it is lawyers after all. Right. Um, a bunch of lawyers are going to be looking at these cases after, after the fact and oh, yeah. trying to pull them together and thinking, okay, is there enough here for some sort of legal action? Right. Did the, did the board of Edgecombe County Elections violate something in some way by doing this? Um, so, great question. Uh, so in terms of materials, uh, I was telling Lucas before I got here that or, uh, just about everything that could have gone wrong today, logistically, went wrong. <laughs> um, I went to our office in Raleigh, and I went to pick up materials, and unfortunately, we ran out of materials, um, oh. other than the ones you see here. So right now, I do not have a t-shirt for you, um, but... You also say, what you I know, I know. I'm very uh, disappointed uh, that I don't have a t-shirt for you. However, um, I will be able to either mail that to y'all or bring it back to y'all next week. That's um, something I can help out with too. Okay. Because I also, I totally forgot that we, you know, I knew what we were doing this tonight, but I forgot what it was, so I have a whole stack. You have shirts? Of, no, 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 not shirts. Oh, okay. Of the trouble of the, of the signs. Oh, itself. yeah. Sitting in my hotline uh, yeah, sitting in my closet. Okay. Um, so you know, we, yeah. So we can we'll have stuff. We can coordinate that yeah. after this. Um, well, if you see him before, and you come back this way. I'll get with him. Okay. Yeah. And I'll get, make know, sure they get get him. Perfect. Um, yeah, we we were like we don't want to have a bunch of leftover materials. Okay. And then uh, we didn't order <laughs> enough, and we ran out today um, before early voting even started. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, uh, these are, are, so you will get a digital version of these forms, um, and it'll basically be a manual uh, detailing um, in a long manual everything that we're going over today. Um, and it'll also have links to uh, guidance from the State Board of Elections, um, as well as legal language that our hotline volunteers use. Um, All right, so in your digital clipboard, ah, uh, yes, that, that was the other thing. Um, I was like, no problem. If we don't have the, the official materials, I'll just print them off. Our printer at the office broke. Um, so uh, in addition to t-shirts, um, maybe I can get some printed materials to Lucas to bring out here as well. Uh, <clears throat> so the clipboard, um, and in this case, it'll be a digital clipboard. It will have a frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the questions that, based on our previous programs, we get asked the most often. Um, any guesses what we get asked most often? Pretty easy. Pretty, pretty simple question. Um, what can I do about? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, but no, that is, not, that is not the most frequently asked question. While we're there, the most mm -hmm. So voters go into the polling place and they, they see you and they're like, hey, I have a question. Oh, what are you, who are you? What is your, what are you doing here? That's a good question too, but no. <laughs> um, the, the question that we see the most often is either am I registered to vote or how do I register to vote? Wow. And so um, that is what we see the most often. And we are going to show you, I'm sure y'all already know, um, but we're going to show you today how to look that up, how to look that information up. Um, the other questions we get are very simply, hey, is this, is this where I can vote? Yeah. Of course, during early voting, you can vote wherever. Um, on election day, it gets a little trickier, right? You have to vote within your precinct, um, which can also be quickly found online. Um, we will give you a fact sheet on provisional ballots, so that's explaining what provisional ballots are and the circumstances under which a uh, provisional ballot would have to be cast. Um, we try to help voters cast a regular ballot as often as possible because the majority of provisional ballots end up uh, being rejected for one reason or another, um, especially this year uh, when it comes to voter ID. Anybody who does not um, show up to the polling place with an acceptable ID, we'll have to vote a provisional ballot. And we want to avoid that happening as much as possible. So if we can catch voters on their way in and ask, hey, do you have an ID? That's gonna be very helpful in preventing folks from actually 
having to cast a provisional ballot. Um, Let's see. We can't ask that question. Do we, it, they have a, do we have an ID? Uh, you can ask that question. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's neutral. Yeah. yeah, it's neutral, and yeah, you're just making sure that they can vote a regular ballot. Mm -hmm. right? um, and we'll get into voter ID in uh, just a minute here, but uh, there is an exception form for some, for folks if they do not have an ID, mm -hmm. um, where they could fill out this form. It's basically an affidavit saying, I don't have an ID and it's impossible for me to get one for X, Y, Z reason. Um, but just, there were about 30 of those used in the Charlotte municipals and all of them got rejected. And so uh, we really want to avoid using provisionals at any cost. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> then we'll have um, a vote protector cheat sheet, um, sort of just bullet points of what we're going over here today. Uh, then we'll have the, your actual report forms. So um, you'll have the incident report form. That one you'll only be filling out if there's an actual incident. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance, there's a very good chance that you'll show up and there will be no incidents and you will not have to support or submit. Is that on top? Do I, we have to call the hotline for the incident also, or yes. just the both? Uh, yes, we both ask that. And call. Yes, okay. correct. We ask that you do both. Okay. Um, but of course, if then uh, with this group, I'm going to be extra flexible. Yeah. My priority is just helping voters cast a ballot. Right. Um, the data collection would be nice, but because on our end we don't have it all figured out yet, mm -hmm. data collection. You know, okay. uh, is not the most important. The most important thing to me is making sure that anybody who shows up to the polling place is able to cast a ballot. So whatever it takes for y'all to do that, okay. and if filling the incident report out gets in the way of that, gotcha. forget the incident report. That's I'm on the same page. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of I think a lot of advocates are. Um, and uh, yeah, that's another reason why why we're doing this. And I just appreciate y'all being graceful and flexible with. Uh, you know, our lack of uh, materials at this moment. Um, then you have your voting site checklist. The voting site checklist is something that we ask uh, that you do for each of your shifts. And your voting site checklist, we'll go over that in a minute too. That's just making sure that physically everything at the voting place is appropriate. So um, there was a question earlier, or earlier about the buffer zone and whether it's marked or not. That's a question on our voting site checklist. Okay. Is there a clear buffer zone, mm -hmm. and if there's not, mm -hmm. then we would ask that you put that on the report, and that's something we would then call about. Of course, if you uh, have the, the gumption, go ahead and tell the CDOE poll worker there, hey, you need to have this marked. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and use your chalk or your line or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm calling the voter hotline about this. You know, let them know. Um, what about if someone is, with, is inside of that big want to know about that too? Uh, yeah. If other, okay. Yeah, yeah, we would. Um, I mean, we generally don't want you to be confrontational. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so don't put yourself in harm's way. Don't, don't right, have, out, right off the bat, you get there and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> no. Don't, oh, no. Um, don't, don't uh, increase pensions, uh, at, you know, for, for no reason, but if you do, See somebody yeah, who's working. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, I know how to do it. Yeah, perfect. Um, <laughs> then we'll have a, a fact sheet on voter intimidation. So voter intimidation is kind of a vague term. What does that mean exactly? Because it's so subjective. One voter might be intimidated by something while another voter is not intimidated by something. Um, in North Carolina, as well as I think uh, 30 other states in the country, it is legal to uh, bring a gun into the polling place to have to have a concealed carry gun. <laughs> is legal? Legal. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's legal. Yeah. So that's something that in the past we've gotten calls like, "There's somebody going in with a gun." Uh -huh. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. That is completely legal. Uh, yeah. Um, but on a regular day, we can't we can't walk in the governmental building. And with it. I mean, so that's something that always trips me up is that uh, so many so many voting places are schools, right? Yeah. And so yeah. technically, if if the school if that building 
has a rule about guns, mm -hmm. so for example, this library says no guns allowed, mm -hmm. then the, the election law defers to the law of that building. Okay. So if a voter, oh. if you're at a school, uh, if one of the voting places is a school, and there's very clearly no guns, no tobacco, all those signs that are out there, uh, and you see somebody with a concealed carry, whether they're legally allowed to have that or not, they're not allowed to go into the school with that. That law takes precedent over mm -hmm. the fact that you're allowed to bring a gun into the workplace. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. All right. Um, so this is just a snapshot of the online materials. Okay. Um, this again, uh, or what I should have said before, all of the digital materials you're able to access from your phone, and yeah. it's very easy to use yeah. on your phone. So you don't need to worry about. <laughs> Bringing awesome. a computer or anything like that, awesome. um, and of course uh, we can provide the the uh, physical copies for you. And if you have a printer uh, at home or access to a printer, you can print them at your leisure, as many forms as you would like. Okay. Um, the vote protector manual is going to be a Google document. Um, it's a very long Google document with links to everything you could possibly need to know about elections. Um, so we'll be sending that to y'all as well. While you're in between slides, um, can you um, register and vote during early vote now? Sorry? Can you still register and vote during early vote? Yes. Okay, I want to uh, make sure people registration. Know that. Right, I want to make sure people still know that. So, I, I got that question. I thought you could, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a, this is a tricky sort of gray area right. we're in. They was trying to take it out. That's what I call them. Well, they did take it out. Right. But, <laughs> why do they have uh, last day early registration? Uh, voter registration day was yesterday, um, but in terms of same-day registration, uh, they are, so right now and prior to this year, any voter, wherever they were registered, could go to their actual voting place or early voting location and use same-day registration mm -hmm. to either register for the first time or update their registration. And then they would cast a regular ballot, not a provisional. The General Assembly this year passed an elections omnibus bill that is going to radically change a lot of things. You know, this training is going to look a lot different next year, unfortunately. Um, one of those things is same day registration. So instead of uh, doing same day registration and casting a regular ballot, those voters will now have to cast a provisional ballot. Which again, we don't we don't really like provisionals. Um, oh, maybe. That would be good news for me. It, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The thing that was sent out about that. Okay. If you want to look that up. Real quick. I'll look that up. Okay. Yeah, I'll look that up real quick. Okay. Okay. You said a whole lot there, so let's back up. Yes. So beginning tomorrow, can you do same day registration? Yes. Okay. That's what. Yeah. Right now you can. Yes. Right. 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 This year. Right. Right. This year. We may not be able to. Right. Lucas right. is double checking for me. Okay. Yeah. Um. Y'all, so much happened in that elections omnibus bill. Mm -hmm. I forget what stayed in and what got taken uh -huh. out. Okay. I only remember the worst oh, version of it. it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so yeah. these are the report forms. Yeah. Um, like I said, we have uh, they're easily easy to use on the internet on your phone. Um, and yeah, you just saw a little example there of somebody taking a photo. Um, would love to see your photos at polling places. Um, I'm gonna ask one of them. Yeah, like okay. you're allowed to take photos, and uh, we, in fact, we encourage you, you know, for example, you see that um, there is no curbside voting set up, mm -hmm. we would encourage you to take a picture of the fact that there's no curbside voting. In that, and, in that buffer. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> correct. But only on the outside. Yes. You on can't the, do it on, on, on the outside. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the paper version. Um, this is upon arrival, um, so is the voting site easy to locate and access, yes or no? Um, is there public transportation within two blocks? Uh, is curbside voting set up, like I asked before? Now some of these things are uh, uh, legislated, mm -hmm. um, you know, there needs to be curbside voting, that is a law. Uh, some of them are not, 
Um, some of them are guidance from the state board. Even with early voting, curbside? <laughs> yes. Not just election day? Not just election day. Wow. Curbside voting needs to be accessible uh, for early voting as well. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we're just asking for simple yes or no uh, for these questions. And then if there were an incident to arise around one of those, that's when we would ask you to fill out the incident report form, which is different. And also, um, most places have a bail or something to notify when they are out there. So uh -huh. you might need to make sure that they are monitoring it if they don't. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Yeah. They may say they have it, but they're not really. Well, they're, they have it, but how they monitor <coughs> a uh -huh. person to come up. Right, how do they know they're even out there? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think we have that in one of the subsequent questions about curbside voting is whether there's some sort of alert mm -hmm. system, some yeah. way of notifying. Um, and generally, curbside voting, we shouldn't see more than three to five cars lined up. Once you see more than that, then you know that they're being ignored um, and would want to, to report something. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's gonna be important to determine on your way to the voting site if there are any significant barriers. So um, last year, again, in Charlotte, uh, there was a site um, that used to be a voting site but was under construction um, last year. And so the, the normal way that you would enter into that voting site was blocked off because of construction and you would have to go around the block and you know there was all sorts of uh, confusion about how do I actually get into this area because of construction. That's definitely something we want to hear about in the report form. Um, Uh, then we're asking about public transportation. You know, that is not a law. There's no law that says there needs to be public transportation. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's great, yeah. yeah. Um, this is just guidance from the State Board of Elections. They say to the county boards, when you're creating uh, voting sites, try to make sure that there's public transportation nearby. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're in North Carolina. We're not in New Jersey or New York where we have the, the subways and the yeah. trains. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll do our best here. Uh, and then this is very important. There needs to be a sign that clearly indicates that this is a polling place. Um, you, I don't know what the signs look like out here in Rocky Mount, but in Raleigh, it's just a very simple sign, red with white stars across the top and bottom that says vote here. There need to be signs like that. Um, there might be a bunch of campaign signs for partisan, uh, partisan activity, that's not the kind of sign we're looking for. There needs to be a nonpartisan indicator that, hey, this is where you go to vote. And then is there adequate parking? Another important thing. Um, in Raleigh, uh, there is a voting site in downtown Raleigh um, <laughs> where, yeah, uh, where it used to be very difficult to park because they didn't reserve parking for voters. Uh, and so you would have to try to find street parking um, and then potentially walk a few blocks away to actually cast the ballot. And, you know, uh, in the fall, that's maybe not so bad, but if you're talking about a primary in May and it's already getting up to 80, 90 degrees, mm -hmm. it's not unacceptable. So making sure there's adequate parking as well. Um, is the building ADA compliant? This is a law. Any place that is a voting site needs to be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. And again, is curbside voting clearly marked and easy to find? All right, some more on curbside voting. This is what, these are the three elements that are required for uh, curbside voting. Um, well, first of all, it has to be offered. Secondly, uh, it has to be offered to any voter that is unable to enter the polling place due to age, or physical or mental disability. And this is important, they do not have to prove anything. You do not have to prove anything. You don't have to show up with a doctor's note or even a handicap sticker on your car. You can just pull up to the curbside voting and say, I need curbside voting. Um, and well, if we hear anybody saying to the curbside, um, what's your reason for being at the curb? They do not need a reason. Are they even allowed to ask that? They're not allowed to ask that. Thank you. 
<laughs> and this is why we partner with uh, Disability Rights North Carolina, right. if y'all are familiar with them. Yeah. And this is sort of the structure of our, our hotline. Right. Um, if, if there's a curbside voting issue, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten when you call the hotline, they're going to hear curbside voting and say, okay, one second, and give you over to a disability rights lawyer. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the checklist during your shift. So this is these are things you're paying attention to uh, throughout your shift, where the questions on the first half are mainly um, right when you get there or as you're arriving. So again, looking at that curbside voting, um, can curbside voters alert poll workers without leaving their vehicle? Um, are curbside voting voters waiting more than 10 minutes? Uh, you know, I'm sure y'all saw um, in previous elections. Pictures of long lines outside voting places. Mm -hmm. We always want to hear about that because if voters are waiting more than 30 minutes to enter the voting place and it's getting up on the end of the election day, then in those cases, the state is required to extend voting uh, times, to extend the hours. So we definitely want to hear if voters throughout the day are waiting more than 30 minutes because that's going to signal to us, okay. Let's keep an eye on that site for later tonight. There might be some voters who, um, who won't get in before 7. And of course, we always tell those voters, stay in line. Don't get out of line, right? Stay in line. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> some more about the buffer zone. Uh, and then uh, the, the assessment is really your opinion. Um, so in your opinion, was this a good location? Was this able to provide a good voting experience? Were the poll workers friendly and, and helpful? Um, those are what we'll have on those, those shifts. All right. Some more about how to answer for us. Okay. So it was changed to where it's not cast as a provisional ballot, but you do have to cast a retrievable ballot um, for proof of address. So I think that it can still be certified before Canvas Day. Probably, yeah, I'll have to look that up and make sure that my training is correct. Yeah, um, it's, yeah it's very strange. <laughs> uh, so, um, quick check-in. Would y'all like to take a quick break, or should we keep it rolling? Keep it going. Keep it going. All right. Yeah, we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so, <coughs> helping and connecting with voters. Um, shift, you may need to complete an incident report form based on what you observe occurring at the voter site or based on what you're hearing from voters. Um, so this is, you know, we talked about this earlier, so mm -hmm. going back to what's happening there. So we define an incident as any issue that arises either uh, with a voter or with the voting site that should be flagged for a response. Um, and it's important that the incident may or may not involve a voter. Um, so we want to emphasize here that your role is not to be an expert in how to respond to an incident. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a group of voting experts who can answer any of these questions um, and provide this assistance through the hotline number that we have. Um, and so that's why it's important to make sure that we, you know, call the hotline for any incident that you deal with. Now, of course, like Kermos pointed out earlier, you know, if you have relations with the Board of Elections and know that that could be some pretty immediate response there, you know, Use your again use you know use your discretion, but if you don't have to have those connections and don't you know don't feel pressured to uh, you know have all that information contained in your head. Know that the hotline is there to to take those types of questions. Um, so you know here are some incidents that you will want to be able to look out for and report to the hotline. Um, so this year, of course, one of the biggest ones. Um, 
wrong with this. Okay, that's okay. Um, so of course, one of the biggest ones is going to be voter ID. Um, you know, like JP was saying earlier with Charlotte, um, voter ID, we're all trying to figure it out this year. So, you know, it's, it's, um, this is uncharted territory. Um, and, you know, we've already seen some issues out in Mecklenburg County, but who knows, maybe it could be different out in the next match, depending on how they're prepared to be case by case out here. Um, so, again, you know, prioritizing, um, asking the voters if they have an ID prior to them entering the polling place. Um, and then, of course, if you find a, a voter who does not have an ID, let them know their options that will be described in the manual that you do have with you, too. Um, so, along with that, you know, the other, the other thing to look out for that unfortunately is becoming more common each time that we vote, it seems, is uh, voter harassment and intimidation. Um, so, Voter intimidation can look like many things, such as people spreading false information about voting, um, you know, people questioning voters about their citizenship, criminal record, or other qualifications to vote, people shouting and being aggressive to voters, the presence of hate groups or symbols at a voting site, uh, people who are not in line to vote hanging around the polling place looking threatening, um, and even like if a person is denied the ability to vote because they are on probation or parole. Um, so these are all, you know, ways that, that voter intimidation can, can look like and be on the lookout for. It's not just going to be, uh, you know, run of the mill, easy to see somebody harassing someone verbally or, or someone showing up, you know, being uh, with, with a kind of just bad attitude. It can look like any of these things. Um, so you will have our voter intimidation fact sheet included in your clipboard, and this will give you details about what is intimidation, so don't feel like you have to, you know, remember all of these. Um, so if you do see voter intimidation happening, make sure you ask the voter to report the incident to an election judge that is inside the voting site. Um, and then make sure you report the incident to the voting hotline, AAAR vote. Um, then if possible, have the person who experienced the intimidation make that call to the hotline um, as well. But if not, it's okay to, to do it yourself. Again, if the person cannot make that call, just make sure you collect their name and phone number so the hotline can follow up with them for any other questions there. And it is very important to capture as many details as possible. So, you know, um, where the incident occurred, who was involved, what the person said, did, how this was reported to election officials, because this can, this can uh, see a lot of, you know, this could be a lot of different things. Kind of like what JP was talking about earlier is, um, you know, not only could we see that kind of harassment be there, but then, you know, also see how it was responded to as well and see if things are running tightly. And just always remember that you are volunteering here. You know, there is, it's, you're not required to stay if you feel intimidated, if you feel like something mm -hmm. bad is going on there. Um, you know, you signed up to do this. You have the, the will to leave as you need to. So don't feel as if you, you, you know, you, you're, you have to stay there. Right. Right. At the very end of the day, your value is, it, your safety is valued above all else. Um, and so now let's talk a little bit about police press. Before presence. you go on, now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do when I'm at the polls. I'm going to get out my phone and I'm going to record it. There you go. But what's in the same? Right. And I take pictures, yeah. you know. Well, well, not only take pictures, but as far as. Yeah. But, but as far as. Now I probably wouldn't video record them, but have it on. Oh, yeah. so can, audio so I can uh -huh. record. That way they want you to know because if they, if you see you record, they probably don't. They, no, it ain't uh, not as much as intimidation, but they may not say what they really want to say. Oh, so yeah. so that's how I'm going to yeah, do that's, that. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's yeah. yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, right. highly encourage uh, recording and documenting as much as possible. Um, and again, that's what I'm doing too. yeah, uh, the form that we were using last year, there was an easy way to upload media, like photos and recordings and things. Hopefully, um, our national partner can make that happen this year. Um, but even if you're just emailing it to us after the fact, it's super helpful for mm -hmm. um, research and for litigation later on. So, okay. as much information as possible. Well, it's what you need. Um, yeah. So, let's talk a little bit about police presence um, at our voting sites because. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <There's> <laughs> And, and, you know, we talk about police, and, of course, um, we're all in the South right now. We're all raised in the South, it seems like. Um, 
and we know that police intimidation was a key tactic used in voter suppression in the Jim Crow uh, South. And so um, that still lingers there, but of course, you know, to this day, you know, the North Carolina police are generally prohibited from patrolling voter sites. Now, of course, there are some exceptions to this rule, um, but, you know, just in case, you know, if there is a police presence at your voting site, call the hotline because, again, they can help you out with those types of questions. So even if, you know, you, you know, like maybe still when in doubt, call the hotline and, and they can help out with that as much as possible. Um, and now let's talk quite quickly um, about individuals patrolling the voting site. Um, so this could include unidentified individuals or security guards who are not election officials monitoring the voting site. So just make sure you keep a lookout for anyone taking pictures or video, uh, except for Camillus, um, or anyone who is dressed in a military or official looking uniform. I don't, I don't even go to the car. <laughs> that camera's in 20 <laughs> it's my weapon, <laughs> but I don't recall no. That's what I was gonna say. Is like you, you say you're not gonna record it. Just I think everybody knows about where you just like walk into an area. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna say because I know that you're listening. Mm. Um, but this can you know this also includes anyone who is following voters and or taking pictures of license plates as well. Um, so you know if you see any of that, of course that is some super shady stuff. So please take note and. Um, and now we, you know, we just talked about this, but let's go back into it. Is if you see someone with a gun at a voting site, so again, North Carolinians are allowed to carry guns, um, open or concealed, in public places. Mm -hmm. However, like we said earlier, these guns are not allowed at some buildings where voting sites are housed, including schools and state federal buildings, because of prior existing laws. Um, so it's not your job to look out for people who are carrying a personal firearm and find out if it's a public building, but it is your job to keep a lookout for any incident that may have a chilling effect on voters. So um, some examples of this is someone with a gun who is not actively in line to vote who is patrolling the site, um, the presence of anyone with a large or showy firearm, such as a machine gun or an AR-15 or something like that. Um, <laughs> no, I, and you know what, I've heard about this in, not even out, in Wake County. Uh -huh. When I was in Wake County, uh -huh. I heard about this happening uh -huh. out there, people driving around with some guns uh -huh. and intimidating voters. So it's, you know, it, it does happen. Uh -huh. um, and so, so if you see someone with a gun at a voting site, call the hotline. Now, I will say that um, I have heard, and I do think it, it might have happened in Edgecombe County too, that there, at an early voting site, someone had a concealed carry, and they called it in, but they didn't exactly handle it the right way to where they created mass panic instead. And that's something that you, again, you don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah, so again, just, you know, be careful. Of course, take care of your safety, but just make sure you know how you're handling the situation as well and, and call the hotline just for that kind of guidance. Um, and yeah, like we just said, for all of this, is when in doubt, call the hotline. That's what it's there for. It's going to be right across your shirt. There's going to be signs that have it. Can't say it enough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You cannot say it enough. Right. Call the hotline. Um, you know, they're there. They're volunteering to be there. So just make sure that, uh, you know, we're making the most of the time. And we're mm -hmm. calling them with all of our questions. Mm -hmm. um, and. Oops. Oh, my goodness. I did. Why are you getting back to where you're um, trying to get to? Um, say, okay, we know there's a voting site here. Um, and then um, at the administration buildings in both Tarver and Edgecombe County, mm -hmm. with agriculture building in Nash County. So um, um, off the top of your head, would you think that this building, social services, uh, uh, administration building Tarver and Nash County agriculture center, would you think they would be uh, public buildings or do not meet the requirement. I'm saying this for somebody to carry a gun. On the agricultural center, I'm honestly not sure. Okay. How about? Uh, it's the board of election the office now. County government. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, it's, it's government. Because uh -huh. so it's the agricultural center because right next to the agricultural center is the board of the election. Board of election. Uh -huh. it's, so it's, same the same building. it's in the same building. Same so building. it's it's a it's a mm -hmm. county it's a county government building. So mm -hmm. it's a government building. Yeah. And, and I say that just to make people aware. Yeah. I mean I know the answer. But I'm just saying, I'm saying it for the record so people uh, know what they, you know, yeah, so they don't have no doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. All right. 
You gotta put it out there, make it plain. <laughs> Oh yeah, so here's another example. So, um, we can upload. uploading photos and video. Yeah, good. So, uh, Love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. These are <laughs> selfies. <laughs> <laughs> These are messes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also shady people. Mm. All right, so then uh, last, we're going to get into um, answering general questions. So. Um, let's see. <clears throat> and while you're doing that, I just want to say this. And the reason why I come out said recording audio, you know, sometimes people get stupid when you they see you videoing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you might want you know be be careful because that may provoke them. So just that's a good point. Sure, you know. But if it's a situation where they don't actually see you, it's something going on, mm -hmm. and you're not involved, directly involved, that's okay. But if you don't really involved, you better be careful video you know how people you better stop video, you know how to do the police. Yeah. You know, so just gotta be careful with you. See, I said we're experimenting and trying new things because we want to make a really great program in twenty twenty four. I think we're gonna have to recruit you for uh, <laughs> Well I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Right <laughs> I've been with Demarcus in North Carolina yeah. for years. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Um so uh the questions um, so earlier I was saying that we often get this question around, um, do you have to go? Apparently? No, 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 I'm okay. just kind of, I probably have to We are wrapping up soon, yeah, yeah no problem. I'm sorry. I'm no, you're good, you're good. We got places to be, I'm getting hungry, I understand. Um, so, uh, uh, this is the website where you can quickly look up anybody's voter registration. So, we created a short link. That's easy to remember. Demnc.co slash lookup. That's just going to bring you to the State Board of Elections website where you can type in anybody's name mm -hmm. uh, and find their voter registration record. And that will tell you what precinct they should be voting in, if they're still registered, um, if they need to do uh, update okay. their registration. Mm -hmm. So very good resource uh, that you might have to rely on a lot for. Mm -hmm. We have to <laughs> uh, I looked you up, but I got some of the marketing results. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to go into that. <laughs> um, so you might get a question about uh, what is a provisional ballot. Um, it's we've gone over this a lot. Used when you can't cast a normal ballot. Mm -hmm. The most common reasons that, uh, and of course, voter ID might become the new most common reason. Uh, but based on previous data. The most common reasons are that a voter is voting in the wrong precinct. So that should signal to you that's election day, mm -hmm. because during early voting, you can vote in any precinct. Mm -hmm. um, so in this county, you can go over there in this county? No. no. You I can't vote in different you counties. Do not cross the county line. No. Thank you. Okay. And if you do that, you technically, like, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to get in there, because you have to if you, you would have to have an edge you, If you, you know, just moved from the Edgecombe you uh -huh. know, side of town to the Nash side yeah. of town, still have that Edgecombe registration, okay. go over there and they can change it. But otherwise, okay. yeah. Right. Um, and then the second one is simply that the voter's record uh, was not found in the system. In other words, they weren't registered or they were registered incorrectly. Um, so going back to that previous slide, something that the State Board of Elections website has on it, um, hopefully we'll see this here in a second, but you can click an option that says sounds like. You see that under first name uh -huh. and last name? Sounds like. So that would, might be helpful if you have a voter who's like, hey, I know I registered last week, but I'm not in the system. Well, maybe they just put an R where they're meant to be a T, something mm -hmm. like that. And a lot of times, too, it helps me put the county. Mm -hmm. You might find 4,000 yeah. of the same name. Yeah. So it's best to put the county. <laughs> also good to know, voters can track their provisional ballots. So they should be given that information when they cast the provisional ballot. But make sure that they know that. If you talk to anybody with a provisional ballot, that they can, uh, they can track it either by simply calling the County Board of Elections. There's also uh, that same tool online. There's a similar tool on the State Board of Elections website where you can type in your name and see where is my provisional ballot? And to save y'all time, do y'all want to see the video? Mm -hmm. 
Me too. I don't have any Me too. Um, <laughs> so okay. the the law states that um, if uh, if one of the poll workers says that this doesn't look like you, mm -hmm. then um, three of the poll workers who uh, it's always going to be a split of either two Republicans and one Democrat, or mm -hmm. two Democrats, one Republican. Um, those three poll workers have to unanimously agree that you do not look like you do on your ID. Okay. Um, so in most cases, we expect you, as long as you know you look like you look on your ID and you're confident of that, mm -hmm. for it to be okay. There's never going to be a situation where one person can stop you from voting because you don't look like you do on your ID. Yeah. And if that does come up, that's definitely an incident we want to hear about. Um, but it's tricky because that's going to be happening inside the voting place. Yeah, right? exactly. But um, they'll come back out. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, talk to someone. And this they is why we have to identify us or whatever to report it. Yeah. Um, if someone goes in, plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No job. You know, or something. Or it's catastrophic incident. Between the ID expiring. Yeah. There's all kind of possibilities. Any number of reasons. Yeah. Um, and I won't even get into signature matching. Because oh, that's going to be next year. Yeah, but as we age, our signature changes. As we age, as I go from <laughs> Starbucks in the morning to McDonald's in the afternoon. If, yeah. I sign, if I sign two things in one day, it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I try really hard that first one, that second yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is why we encourage you to take as much of the voter ID okay. materials as you want to pass out so, so that people have that going into the, the voting enclosure. I like this thing. 
And the fan is, yeah, oh, the fans are popular. We always make a, a fan every year. Um, so take as many of all of that as you want. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, like I said before, somebody may show up to the voting place and not have an ID for whatever reason. Either um, they are 18 and don't have a license and just don't have an ID, or they were recently robbed and don't have their wallet and don't have an ID, or um, they changed their name and uh, their identity in some way and applied for a new ID, but it's not here yet because the DMV famously is slow. Um, two things. Each county board of elections uh, is required to provide an ID free of cost to voters. That has to happen, though, before you go to vote. Mm -hmm. So I would not try to do that on election day, mm -hmm. on the days that they're administering election, mm -hmm. elections. Um, so probably not going to encounter that option. The second option is this ID impediment form. Um, if you fill out this form, uh, you can cast a ballot without an ID, but it's going to be provisional. So at the end of the day, worst comes to worst, they don't have an ID at home to go get and bring back. Um, make sure they at least know mm -hmm. that if they don't have an ID and can't furnish one for whatever reason, at the very least, they'll be able to do the ID exception form. Mm -hmm. and have hopefully cast a, provision. a provisional ballot. Right, along with that. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are the key things about voter ID I wanted to, to make sure y'all got. And that about does it for our training. Um, do you have any questions about uh, the material, um, about the program, or anything else related to elections before we let you go? And again, I'm going to send out a bunch of information in an email tomorrow. I mean, you covered every question I had coming into this. Also, I need to just go home and reread everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, a lot of our vote protectors, you know, they'll end up um, going to a polling place on, on the day of their shift. It's pretty quiet, and then you have a 50-page handbook that you can read uh, from <laughs> us. So, um, so at least we're giving you, like, some form of entertainment, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I really appreciate y'all being here today. Um, and apologies that we don't have all of our ducks in a row, all of our I's dotted and T's crossed. But, but next year, next year, we're going to be everywhere. We're going to be everywhere. Um, and yeah, uh, again, I love the history that Rocky Mount has. Something I learned uh, is that Rocky Mount is the exact halfway point. Anybody know what I'm about to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you knew about that, and I got oh, yeah. stuck behind one of those trains today trying to get over here, oh, yeah. uh, going north and yes, south. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, work with, is... yeah, I work with people in New Jersey who know all about Rocky Mountain. Yeah. And the only reason they knew is because they traveled to Florida. Mm -hmm. And Rocky is where they spend the night. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, and I mean, it used to be an economic uh, powerhouse in North Carolina, and people don't know that, uh, but it used to be a very important economic center. Um, and then mm -hmm. just this whole phenomenon of being split between two counties, you know, mm -hmm. it's novel, it's it's unique, but ooh, for election administration, I would like for that to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I talked to the Board of Elections Chair in Edgecombe County, and, you know, the municipal elections are not financed by the county commissioners. Mm -hmm. So that was something both boards got together and decided they would wait till Monday. He did tell me why, I can't remember. But they don't have to do it all so many days, so they chose to do it the way they did it. But it was the Board of Elections that yeah. they, they met and, and they, they chose to do it that way. Okay, interesting. Which is, yeah. to me, I, I would love to know why they feel like that's a good thing. Because to yeah. me, that's not a good thing. Yeah, that's and, not uniform. Yeah. Right. I mean, so I don't know why they... I think it probably boils down to cost, just trying to save well, money, whatever that is. Well, means. see, I don't know whether it's coming out of the Board of Elections or the municipalities, because I know... Uh, for early voting one time, well, not early voting, it was for the runoff, and Rocky Mount page the difference or something. So I got to check into that, because I used to go to all the board relations meetings, now they meet whenever they want to, I don't never know. So, I mean, it's hard. I used to go to all the board relations meetings. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm... And do they uh, put them online here? No, I don't know if, they, if I don't record them, they ain't getting recorded. Yeah, you got, mm -hmm. When you get there, <laughs> they hold them in the office right. up there on the... 
third floor. No, it's on the fourth now. Fourth floor, yeah. Fourth floor. Mm -hmm. So they're really, they're really. Uh, In a little room. Yeah. Yeah, please take um, at least these. Okay. Uh,